All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about pitfalls of elimination methods. So these pitfalls, it can happen both uh, in Knife Course and Course Jordan. So the first one here, we call it as division by zero. And then we have round of errors and then ill condition systems. So these three pitfalls are worth noting. So the first one, division by zero, let's say you have a set of equation here and if you look at the first row here it doesn't have any x1 so the normalization when you do normalization you will face a uh, division by zero all right division division by zero because a11 here the pivot element equals to zero all right so because this one is what we call as pivot pivot row pivotal row and the first the first one here which is the a11 a11 element is the pivot element all right and then uh, next one we have round of errors since computers carry a limited number of significant figures round of errors can occur and it will propagate so when it starts it will go on and on and on and on until it will definitely, um, you know, the, the final answer will diverge very, very far from the true answer. And then we have ill condition systems. So here it says adequacy of solution depends on the condition of the system. Small changes in coefficients will result in large changes in the solution. This is ill condition system. What is well condition system? Well condition system so it's just the opposite of the ill condition system so well condition system are those where um, a small change in one of the coefficients will result in a small change um, in a similar small change in the solution okay so it's just the other way around of the ill condition system okay how to solve the problem that we just mentioned before so there is a method we call as partial pivoting there are two methods so the first one is partial pivoting the other one is uh, complete pivoting but in your syllabus we're going to cover only partial pivoting because this is common and complete pivoting is very rare and not common okay so how do we do this partial pivoting Let's look at the steps. There are two steps here. The first one is we have to determine the largest available coefficient in a column before, oh sorry, below the pivot element. And then this is the keyword here, switch the row so that the largest element is the pivot element. So for example here, let's look at this linear equation given this um, A11 element equals to 0. 0003 okay so this is the first row and this is the second row and here the pivot element a11 is 0 .00, 0 0.0003 which is very close to zero okay so let's say we just solve this and see what happened without doing anything okay so just solve using cost elimination and we will get x1 equals to one third k okay? and x2 here is two third so however we find that the result is very sensitive to the number of significant figures carried in the computation so if we use three significant figures this is what we're going to get and the uh, relative error is very big 800 and if we increase the significant figures we find that the answer as in the table here and that we can see that the error is decreasing following the trend all right but what happened if we do partial pivoting and let's check out the answer and we can compare so let's say we do partial pivoting in which we switch switch with row with the largest pivot element so if you look at the original equation just now this is the original equation this is your first row this is your second row and the first row the pivot element is 0 0.003 if 
for the second row this is the pivot element 1.0000 if you compare between this and this the pivot element in the first row is definitely smaller than the one in the second row so according to this partial pivoting method we have to switch the row so this row will go down and this second row will come up and we have something like this okay this is after we do partial pivoting we just switch the row and then we do the simple elimination method and we got x2 equals to 2 third x1 equals to 1 third is the same if we use three significant figures but then look at the answer when we increase significant figures we can see that the answer is very much different from the previous one and you can see that the errors are so tiny still remember the first before we do partial pivoting the errors are so big if we switch the row the errors decrease tremendously okay and even if we use more significant figures it means we can um, we can overcome the round of error problems and this also we can say that it overcomes the ill condition systems so let's look at this example here use cost elimination to solve this problem employ partial pivoting and check your answers all right so if they ask us to do partial pivoting you have to look at the all the elements of a a one one here this and this this is a two one and this is a three one which one of these are smaller definitely the first one and which one is larger definitely the third row so we switch between this and this this row will go to the third row and the third row will become the first row and then when you have switched the rows of one and three you solve this using the um, elimination method and you will get the answer such as written here oh i forgot to mention when you do partial pivoting you do for the whole for the whole steps so this i consider this as first step lah. when you reach to this point here and you need to do more elimination uh, round so you have to do the second pivot switching rows meaning you have to switch between this and this this row will go down and this third row will goes up okay so when you pivot this will be your current augmented matrix right and you just solve this using the regular method elimination cost knife cost and you got your answers okay let's look at another one here given the system of equation use cost elimination with partial pivoting to solve for the x so in this question obviously the first row we don't have a11 so this will cause the first problem which is division by zero out of the out of these rows which one of these rows is it two or the third is it the second or the third have the largest element um, a11 element so of course third row so we switch this row with the third row okay we pivot by switching rows one and third and you will end up with this new system and we solve it a uh, regular way and then we arrive to this augmented matrix so we have to pivot again between these rows and these rows this row will go down and this row will come up so right, this is after pivoting and this is after we uh, do the elimination and then we can do back substitution to work out what is x1 what is x2 and what is x3 right thank you that's all for partial pivoting.